Hey there guys. Okay, I'm gonna try again. So this is Ask Me Mon Monday number 47. We tried this before. I got about 20 minutes in and then there was like craziness happening. Apparently I sounded really old. No lady wants that. Um, and then I sounded like Dr. Doom. Still nobody wants that. And then I went completely mute. So that clearly doesn't work when you're trying to demonstrate something. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna recap my entire London trip again. Nobody needs to hear that again. But I am, I do wanna do the demo to make sure that you know what we're doing. So for those of you that didn't turn into the debacle that just happened, let me just recap that I am going to show how to knit the shawl collar that is in, and you can see it's a shawl collar because it folds over. It doesn't look like a shawl collar here because this is a two-year-old and we tried to wrangle her and get it and get it down. And frankly, you just gotta cut your losses sometimes because but she's so cute. Her name was Sailor. She's so cute that we, you know, we really didn't care about the collar. So this kit is available on the Interweave store right now. It's around $53 and it comes with all of the yarn that's in, it's the Plymouth Galloway, it's chunky yarn. It comes um, in my, with my cute little sticker. It comes with great directions, including all of the charts that you need, directions, clear pictures. Uh, the only thing that you need, just add needles. You can also buy the pattern on its own also on um, the Interweave store website. Okay, now we're gonna get back in action. So what I'm gonna show you how to do is how to create a shawl collar. I'm gonna lay it out to show you what the whole, th this particular pattern is designed so that the button band and shawl collar are all in one and they're knit separately. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like, but then I'm gonna show you I made a little change for our demo. So let me go ahead and do the flip around. You might hear my cat running around at this point. Anything goes. Um, I'm gonna do the flip and then we're gonna get started on our demo and hopefully it'll all go well this time. All right, ready and... All right, so this is what a shawl collar looks like if you work it separately, as I did, from the sweater. So what would happen is, depending on if you were knitting for a boy or a girl, your button band would go on one side or the other. You can see this is where the buttons go. And then this is the collar. So I have it flipped up now, but I'm using only one hand because I'm holding the camera with the other, so just bear with me this would fold over. But the, so the fold over part, I'm gonna unfold so you can see, you'll notice that it is wide. It slowly gets wider and wider. So this is created by a series of short rows and it's super easy um, and pretty satisfying to watch come together. So the other th cool thing about it is that you have the power to decide how much fold over you want, how long you want your shawl collar. I've told you in the pattern how long I suggest for this particular pattern, but in general, I would love it if you just felt comfortable knowing that you can create and add a shawl collar and button band at any point in time if you, <laughs> and now I've dropped the camera, um, if you decide that you want to add a collar to a different sweater or whatever. All right, so what I have done for the purpose of this of this demo, demo is I've gotten rid of the button band just on my step outs just because it's a lot to see. So I'm going to just be focusing on this section only. What I've done is I've, for my step outs, I've added just a little bit of where the, of where the button band is, but mostly you're just going to see this. All right, so the first thing that you, that the pattern calls for to do is knit, I'm knitting straight, I'm on circulars because I, circulars are long enough. I actually prefer to use them anyway, um, but I'm just knitting straight. This isn't joined round. So the, the pattern requires for you to knit in two by two rib for um, two rows, I believe. Um, yes, Kathy, uh, you could make this a scarf. Sure, why the heck not? Absolutely. All right, so now once you've worked those two rows, then I'm back on my right size and it says, continue working in two by two knit purl, which is what I've done and I wasn't gonna make you watch it, so I did it ahead of time. And then um, what you're going to do, it says to work 110 stitch, depending on the size. Let's just pretend I'm all the way to the end. And now you're gonna start your slip stitching, or I'm sorry, your slip stitching for short rowing. So it is called a wrap and turn. So what that means is you are going to 
work it until the area that you are supposed the designated number the pattern says 110 stitches but that doesn't really matter for this i've put a marker there just to just because it would be frankly it's easier for me right now to show you okay so we're at our 110 stitches and now it's time to start our short row magic all right so what we do is keeping the yarn in the back of your work you're going to slip the stitch purlwise onto your right hand needle then you bring your yarn in front then you slip the stitch back to that left hand needle so what you've done is you've wrapped that okay then you're going to turn you're leaving all of these stitches unworked they're not being worked at all so that means that no fabric or depth will be created there you turn it around and you can see that it's this stitch is wrapped that's what that means and that just helps prevent holes okay and then from here you're going to continue working in your stitch pattern which is the knit two purl two again and you're going to do that all the way the pattern calls for so that was your first short row so that was done so now that you're on your wrong side and it says to work 54 stitches and you're going to wrap and turn again so i'll move that out of the way so i'm i'm this is let's say i've worked all the way back i did my short row and now i'm ready to do another short row so i worked my 50 four stitches and you can already see that there's a little bit of width that's been created and what that did is that went so first i went all the way to the opposite side and now i'm coming back and this will be the entire width of the collar so i'm going to six eight I'm to the point where, okay, it's time for me to start again. So this time, it doesn't matter that this was a purl stitch before it was a knit. It doesn't matter at all when you wrap and turn. I'm still gonna slip it. I bring the yarn forward. I move it back. Flip it around. And then I'm going to continue. Now this, these first two stitches happen to be purl, so I'm gonna need to bring that yarn back in front again and I'm gonna work. Uh, somebody just asked what kind of cast on I used. It does not necessarily matter. I think I used the long tail cast on or I use the uh, single tail cast on that's sometimes called the thumb cast on. Um, that doesn't matter for this particular pattern. Okay, and then you're gonna just continue and you're gonna repeat that back and forth. But now this is the part where you can, now this is all written out in the pattern, but the the point that I wanted to make here is let's say you were just going rogue and you wanted to make a collar on your own or you wanted to add more depth all you need to know from this point is from now on you're just gonna work until four stitches before the last slip stitch so I'm gonna get a new step out this one I've done I've gone back and forth and back and forth and you can see how that depth has been created and I wanted to show you how I'm going to undo this one I'm going to undo this wrap and turn just so you can see for a second how I knew so other than the fact that it's actually listed I want you to be empowered enough to know where how to know if you just like spaced or if you were doing this on your own how you know it is time for you to slip the, a stitch so you can see here this is the the um, wrapped stitch, right? Well, I've told you that you want to be that you know it's time to wrap when you're four stitches from that wrapped stitch coming back. So I know that now, one, two, three, four. It is time again to do that. So again, slip, slip back. Okay, on the last row that it has you do that. So you do four for this sweater. You're going to do four short rows. The next row is a right side, and now at this point, you're no longer going to be working short rows. You're just going to work all the way to the end. And as you're doing so, you're going to work back and forth just in rib stitch. Uh, Corey wants to know what you would use this for other than a sweater. 
Um, well, short rows in general, anytime you wanted to create a little bit more fabric in one area than another, it's great. A lot of some people you do use it for bust shaping. Um, but for this in particular, a collar for a sweater is really what this was de designed for. Another viewer mentioned that um, you could do this for a scarf. I would do probably, I would go back and forth way more times if I were going to do that and create a really sort of like deep lush collar. Okay, so I'm working back and the only thing I wanted to show you is the last thing, and you can choose to do this or not do this. I know that there are going to be some designers that are would roll over in their proverbial graves suggesting that, um, for me suggesting that you, you don't do it. But this is where you want to bury your wraps and turns. So let me just get to one. Yes, you do use short rows for um, sock heels. Um, it just is a little, it's the same concept, just a little bit different um, application. All right, so I am trying to find a wrap and turn here. Okay, so I keep going all the way to the end. Yes, you could absolutely use this for a poncho. Anything that you can use, uh, that was, uh, Corey suggested that. Anything that had a collar, you could. Um, I wouldn't do it with the long button band. I would just do the collar as I'm showing now, but yes, absolutely. Okay, we're almost to, oh, we're almost here. Okay, I wanted to get you to where one of the wrap and turns are because you can get rid of, so you can see here that it's pretty obvious that there's a wrap right there. And that, that can be a little bothersome to the eye to some people. So as we're working, you can choose to bury that. And all you do is you work that stitch with this stitch. So let's see, this is a purl. So I could do this whole thing, this whole dance where I lift it up and I get it on the needle and you know replace it and then, and then work them together. That frankly is too much work for me. So what I do, since this is a purl, I'm gonna go through this one and through the stitch that's on the loop. So you can see I'm through both loops and I'm just gonna work them together. That would have gone a lot smoother had it actually not fallen off the needle. Okay, I'm gonna undo it so I can do it again because I'm not happy with how unclear that was. All right, so here's the loop. You wanna work this loop. This is the wrap with this loop. So what I might do, what might be easier is slip this over to the right. I just said it was too much work, but because we're on camera, I'm just gonna make sure this works. I wanna take that loop, the wrap, put it on my needle, I place the stitch back on my needle, and then, because I'm on a purl stitch, I just purl them together. We'll make sure that you get through all the strands. Okay, and then it's completely buried, and then you just keep going again and again. And it doesn't matter if you, oh, there's another wrap and turn. So I think I wanna bury that in the pearl. Um, it doesn't matter if you knit continental or if you knit English, you're still going to use the same method of working those wraps and turns together so that they're buried. Okay, and so I'm going to just go ahead and show you that. So now I'm not turning at all. I finish it to the end so that's one side, but now I need to flip it over and I won't demo this because you'll get the idea. I want to do the exact same thing that I just did on that side all the way to the other end. And then I'm going to work a couple rows straight or depending, there's, there's also buttonholes involved or whatever, but it creates the depth. One thing I, wanted, I did want to show you is I want to show you the difference between what it looks like if you bury, if you work your wrap and turns, and if you don't. So if you work them... You can see a little bit of, obviously you're seeing the short row difference, but it's not that noticeable. But I specifically did not work them in over here, and you can see that you get these bars across. Now whether or not you'd see them, depending on how you had your color focus or folded, I don't know, but um, you know you will see it. So you could call it a design feature, or you could just take care of it the way that um, the way that I told you to a second ago. All right, I'm gonna do the flip around now and I'm gonna answer some questions. All 
Um, a couple of questions. Well, first of all, let me do a quick scroll up and see if there's any questions about this specific thing. And if not, I'm gonna answer a couple of the questions that were asked on the earlier, um, on the boards earlier. Um, I don't see any, I don't see any questions. If I missed them, ask again and I'll, I'll watch it now. Sometimes it's a little hard to watch um, while you're also holding the camera and knitting. So if I miss them, I'm sorry. Um, I did have a couple of questions on the boards. One was from Instagram and it was from My Heart's Full and she wanted to know, she was looking for a crochet hat pattern that was for really chunky yarn and that was, no, was stress free. I swear I didn't plant this question, but it was perfect timing because yesterday, I don't know if all of you guys, um, if you celebrated, but yesterday, yesterday, Saturday, Saturday was I love yarn day, or as I like to call it, you know, every day of the week. Uh, but it's, uh, the Craft Yarn Council has organized for six years running this huge event called I love yarn day. And it's really just um, like a recognition and an awareness thing. And they asked me to contribute a pattern to donate so that everybody, um, so that you could love some yarn. And so I actually had gotten some great like spun cloud yarn from my friend Amy over at Knit Collage. And some of you probably saw me holding pictures of it at TNNA, but I made this hat and it's super fun. You can make it in like an evening easily. And it's so fun and it's super cute. It's just like, it's just granny like granny stripes. And I can't remember what size hook I used, but it was pretty big. I used one of the Jumbo Amore hooks. Super cute, great gifts, because honestly, this is a one ball, this is a one ball project. Um, knit collage, super fun yarn. You can see there's little bits of wisp in it. Really easy. The pattern is free as part of our contribute contribution for um, I Love Yarn Day. You just need to go to um, just Google I Love Yarn Day or I'll put it in the show notes here and it comes up on the Craft Yarn Council website right next to a little picture of me. So uh, so this is a hat. Like I said, it's 100,000 degrees in here. So you can see I'm all flushed from it and from the lights. But super fun, great gift because you could do this at night. You can make this for all your friends. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to get the get the holiday panics where I'm like, I gotta get, I gotta get my needles going and my hooks going. So this is a great project. So thanks for that question. My heart's full. Um, I hope you like the pattern and the yarn is super fun. And for those of you that have wanted to try knit collage yarn, but think, oh gosh, it's a little spendy for, you know, for a big project, one ball project to give it a try. They're awesome over there. So the other question came from Caitlin um, from Facebook. Sorry, it's so hot, I have to take it off. Um, and she wanted to know, she wanted to go back to talking about London. She wanted to know if the industry is supported there um, and do they have shows like Stitches and VK Live um, like we do and do they have local yarn stores and that kind of thing. So I sort of answered that in the video before but who knows if that one will even, that one might go away. Um, so I have to say this, full disclosure, I didn't get to see a lot of yarn stores. I only went to an event that had booths for yarn stores. They do have them there. They don't, it doesn't seem like they have big craft stores, like the big box stores, like a Joanne Michaels kind of thing, but um, they do, as I said earlier, or maybe it was in the other video, they do actually carry yarn um, and other, they have haberdashery departments, which I love, haberdashery, fun. Uh, but not as many yarn yarn stores, like the yarn, a lot of the yarn stores that I saw tend to also carry fabric and that type of thing. I'm not saying that's the only, that they don't have sole yarn stores, but there seem to be more kind of haberdashery store, stores instead. Um, I couldn't tell if the industry is supported. I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't delve in that far. I will say that I noticed that there were far fewer designers there than there are in the States. Um, but a lot more spinners, if that makes sense. I mean, it does make sense because of all the sheep um, and wool out there. So, and I did, I also noticed something that was really interesting. They, the people, at least the people that I came in contact with um, on the huge show floor. So there was the big knitting and stitching show and that's annual and tens of thousands of people 
tens of thousands of people come through that. It was insane. So they have big shows like that. And then they have some smaller ones that I'm hoping to see at some point. Um, I think there was just a Loch Ness show that I had just met. There was Yarndale, and I think that's like a really cute, like a smaller boutique one. Um, so I don't have any expertise on that. I know that they exist. Um, but what I did notice, I noticed a couple of really interesting things that, that were new to me. One, there wasn't the expectation for free stuff that there is in the state, which I found really interesting. I had it set up so that there would be a make and take for headbands. Make and takes are a totally normal thing here in the US. I don't know if they're big in Australia, or if they're big you know, in Japan, or if they're big elsewhere, but it's just normal here. Where you come, you sit down, we give you the supplies, you make things. Well, a lot of the people there, it took some convincing. They were very cynical, like why? Like, what's the catch? Um, so that was a little barrier I had to break through. But on the flip side, they also didn't bat an eye at having to purchase the patterns um, that I was selling there. And that is, uh, that's an issue here in the States because we have so much free content and most, and a lot of yarn companies give stuff for free and that kind of thing to help sell yarn. And so it, I would be interested in exploring more if overall as a community, there's more support for people like myself who are making money in the or making a living in the industry because they're willing to purchase versus just get for free. I don't know what the answer is, um, Caitlin, but um, I appreciate the question and I definitely am interested in the subject matter, obviously. So as I delve in a little bit more, I will try to find out more. So the company that I'm working with, Dare Moores, they have a US storefront and an Australia storefront and a New Zealand storefront. You can just go to daremores.com and then they'll find them through. But the kits that we're talking about here, I have, I think four of them are available now, knit and crochet. This is the only one for kids. All the other ones are accessories. So please go to interweavestore.com and check them out. Or you can just go to vickihowell.com and click on partnerships. And I've got direct links to everything. And I'm gonna be demos, doing demos for them. Um, lastly, I'll show you my, my show FO, my finished object. This is a cowl that I made. Um, it's called the Eye Spiral Cowl. And it's out of my wool, wool pack of chunky yarn. And I, I super dig it. Another great gift. So thank you for dealing with all of the technical issues today. It's just, hey, that's how we roll. That's what this live stream thing is about. But the cool thing is, is that, um, I don't know, it makes it feel even more authentic than it, as far as getting to, you know, share the time with my community which is you. So thanks again for uh, spending a little bit of your Monday with me. If you learned something um, or just dug it in general, please share the video, tell your friends about it. You can watch all archived Ask Me Monday videos at facebook.com backslash, Vic, no, forward slash, slash Vicki Howell. And then you just um, click on a videos and there's a whole playlist for it. Please check out my kits. Um, I'm really excited about the whole yarn craft thing. In case you hadn't gotten it so far, I'm really passionate about getting people to be creative, especially with yarn. And so teaming up with Interweave to do these yarn craft kits has been so much fun. And I hope that you get um, a little bag of awesome from me to you in your mailbox when you order them. Thank you so much. I will see you again next week with a completely different tutorial. I don't remember what it is, but uh, it's going to be good. Oh, I think next week is actually um, from Tuesday morning. I think we're going to be talking about how to combine different items that you find at Tuesday morning and along with your knitting and crochet supplies and doing something with it. That may or may not be true. I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but I'm going to be doing something with them. And uh, regardless, I will be here to, to answer any questions that you have and just kind of hang out with you virtually. So have a great rest of your week and I will, uh, I'll see you, I'll see you on the flip side. Bye.